Hemoglobin and myoglobin are oxygen-binding proteins. Hemoglobin is found in blood, and myoglobin is abundant in skeletal and cardiac muscle. Hemoglobin is an oxygen transporter, and myoglobin is an oxygen storer. Myoglobin is a globular protein made up of a single polypeptide chain 153 amino acids long. Hemoglobin is also a globular protein, roughly spherical in shape, but it is a tetramer and is composed of four polypeptide chains. Specifically, hemoglobin is an alpha-2, beta-2 type tetramer, meaning it has two identical alpha chains and two identical beta chains. Each of hemoglobin's four subunits is very similar to the polypeptide chain making up myoglobin. The alpha chains are 141 amino acids long, while the beta chains are 146 amino acids long. The myoglobin polypeptide chain consists of eight alpha helix sections, which are denoted A to H. Each polypeptide chain of the four hemoglobin subunits also consists of these eight alpha helix sections. Between these alpha helices are connecting regions named after the helices they connect, for example, the AB region or BC region. Amino acids in each helix section are numbered, for instance, histidine F8. Both myoglobin and hemoglobin contain a prosthetic group, which is a non-protein group forming part of, or which is combined with, a protein. The prosthetic group found in both myoglobin and hemoglobin is the heme group. The heme group is made up of a protoporphyrin ring and a central iron atom. There is a heme group in each of hemoglobin subunits, as well as in myoglobin's polypeptide chain, nestled in the cleft between the E and F helices. The iron in each heme group is the part of both proteins that binds to oxygen. Iron can interact with six ligands, and four of these are provided by the nitrogen atoms of the pyrroles in the porphyrin ring. A fifth is provided by the imidazole side chain of histidine F8. When oxygen binds to the iron, that is a sixth ligand. Note that when oxygen is added on, it is tilted at 60 degrees to the perpendicular. A really cool conformational change happens when oxygen binds to the iron in the heme group. This cool phenomenon is of no consequence in myoglobin, but hemoglobin's biological function depends on it. Before the binding of oxygen, steric constraints result in the ferrous iron lying 0.055 nanometers above the porphyrin plane. The binding of oxygen causes the iron to be drawn into the plane of the porphyrin ring, so that it is only 0.026 nanometers above it. The movement of the iron drags histidine F8 along with it, and sets off a chain of conformational changes in hemoglobin that results in increased affinity of the heme groups of adjacent subunits for oxygen. In hemoglobin, the four subunits, the two alpha subunits and the two beta subunits, are arranged into two dimeric halves, one alpha-1-beta-1 subunit pair and one alpha-2-beta-2 subunit pair. Each of these dimeric halves moves as one rigid body. Subunits interact mostly with dissimilar chains. In other words, alpha subunits interact with beta subunits, but not alpha subunits, and beta subunits interact with alpha subunits, but not beta subunits. There are two types of contacts between the two dimeric halves of hemoglobin, packing contacts and sliding contacts. Packing contacts do not shift during the conformational changes that occur after the binding of oxygen, while sliding contacts do. When oxygen binds, the conformational change results in the dimeric halves rotating 15 degrees relative to one another. Hemoglobin's two conformations are called the T, for tense or taut, and R, for relaxed, forms. When hemoglobin is in the T form, oxygen is only accessible to the heme group of the alpha chains. Steric hindrance prevents it from binding to the beta chains. This steric hindrance is not present in the R conformational state. Hemoglobin resists oxygenation because its deoxygenated form, the T form, is stabilized by certain hydrogen bonds and interchain salt links. These interactions are broken in the oxygenated form, the R form, where hemoglobin is stabilized in a different conformation. Meanwhile, myoglobin does not easily release oxygen. When myoglobin binds oxygen, it becomes oxymyoglobin. Oxymyoglobin releases oxygen during times of extreme oxygen deprivation, like when you're exercising. While myoglobin's oxygen binding interaction displays classical michaelis menten type saturation behavior, hemoglobin's interaction results in a sigmoid-shaped curve rather than a hyperbolic one. The sigmoid shape allows us to draw some conclusions. 
Binding of oxygen to one subunit of hemoglobin strongly enhances binding of oxygen to other subunits, a phenomenon called cooperativity. Hemoglobin binds oxygen in the lungs, where the partial pressure of oxygen is around 100 torr. Here, 98% of hemoglobin has oxygen bound to it. In the capillaries of some tissues, the partial pressure of oxygen is 40 torr, and the hemoglobin releases oxygen. Here, 6% of hemoglobin has oxygen bound to it. The 92% difference is thanks to cooperativity. If hemoglobin's curve was hyperbolic instead of sigmoidal, then only 79% of hemoglobin in the lungs would have oxygen bound to it, and 28% of hemoglobin in the capillaries would have oxygen bound to it, for a difference of 51%. So the cooperativity means that hemoglobin is 92 over 51%, or 1.8 times more efficient at delivering oxygen. If you like this video, like and subscribe. You can also support me by following the link to my Patreon. If you have any topics you'd like me to cover, please leave a comment.